Good morning, people. This is a different kind of video. It's a Glendon Cameron perspective. Someone had posted in the Hustle University about this woman that's in the revolving door of unemployment. And I read the article with great interest. You know, she's 51. She has a degree. She's lived a life. She reached a certain point where it became untenable for her to hold full-time employment. She moves from place to place, a vagabond, if you will, a gypsy of life. She stays here three weeks, six weeks, using friends. Her possessions, her belongings are scattered all over the country. She recently had to file bankruptcy. She had to leave one place to go to, I suppose, her home of record to file bankruptcy, go back. And I just sat there and I looked at this and it was very, very sad. It was extremely sad. She went to school. She got a degree. She worked hard. And now she's caught up in what I call this disruptive web of technology advancement in the new disruptive economy. Understand, you can do all of the right things one time. And it's not going to last because it keeps changing. And there are many people on both ends. There's this woman. She's 51. I'll post the link to the article. And then there are kids who are coming out of high school and they're both feeling that same problem, that feeling that I can't move ahead. You know, 24, 28, 30 years old, still living at home with mom and dad because they cannot gain employment that gives them a wage that will let them live independently of their parents. And ask yourself, what's going on? What, what is really happening? Why are so many people catching hell? Here's my perspective. American lifestyles were the epitome of the best lifestyle in the world to have. It's no longer the case. There are other places to have lifestyles that are equivalent to ours or even better. So what really is happening is as we hit this ceiling, most of us, there's some people that's going to continue to have these outrageously opulent lifestyles. The rest of the world is catching up. And with the rest of the world catching up, they're sucking up natural resources, intellectual property resources. There's a lot of things that are happening. So things that used to be really expensive are becoming extremely cheap, such as cell phones, televisions, computers. You can get a fully tricked out loaded computer for under 500 bucks. 1998, when I got my first computer, it was $3,500. And it couldn't do what my cell phone does now. Things that you need, food, juice, durable goods, things that you need, up, 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 oil. There's a trick going on with oil. All the things are going on and they impact your lifestyle. A high tax rate. So you could be making more money on paper than your parents, but your father made half the money you made, but he took home more and he got to use more of that money. All of this stuff is going on and people are trying to solve these new fangled problems with old fashioned solutions that don't apply. Going out and getting another degree when the degree that you have isn't getting you what you want without a clear cut plan of success is financial suicide. And people continue to do it because the cultural narrative supports it. The cultural norm supports it. There are people who are extremely intelligent, have all types of academic credentials, are serving me coffee at Starbucks because they don't have the skill sets for this new disruptive economy. It's about information and skill sets. If you're caught up in unemployment, chronic unemployment, chronic underemployment, you just can't seem to make more scratch. You have to get to the root cause. You have an information gap situation. You don't have the information and the skills that pay the bills. That's your problem. And also you have a larger problem. It's called awareness. Because if you make this decision that I'm going to go to school and get this MBA in the vacuum of my father did it. My mother did it. I know a lot of people that did it. I'm seeing people making that decision and it's just not panning out. And part of the reason, going back to the earlier part of the disruptive economy, the number of those higher payer jobs are diminishing rapidly. 
And hold on. It's going to pick up. The pace will increase in five years or less. It's going to like hockey stick because of technology. I've said this before and I keep saying this. Someone's going to create a billion dollar company with 25 employees. It may have already been, ha I mean, it's already happened. I don't know. Do you understand the magnitude of that? To create a billion dollar company used to take thousands of employees. In old, old school economy, tens of thousands of employees. I think between Apple, Google, and Microsoft, worldwide, they have 150,000 employees. To give you the proper context, back in the early 80s and 90s, General Electric, General Electric GE had divisions that had more than that. Divisions. Not just one, divisions that had more employees than all of those big companies combined. The number of organic beings that will occupy a building is going to go down. Just the way it is, because technology, the number of people working from home is going up. So if you want to make it in this new, fangled, disruptive economy, I'm going to give you a few tips. Number one, never stop learning. Never stop learning. There is no such thing as your education is done. Never stop learning. Learn to read shit that bores you. Learn to read, enjoy, absorb shit that bores you. You cannot take this information lightly. You have to do this. This isn't like, well, you know, if I feel... Because we're going to have a diverging two classes of American citizens. Those who have it going on and those who are catching hell. And they'll still be better off than a lot of people in other parts of the world. But perspective matters. If you feel that you're catching hell, you're catching hell. So the second thing that you need to do, need to do, start a business. I've had many people over the years like, oh, everyone doesn't want to start a business. Some people can you're fit to live. You're fit to suck oxygen. You're fit to have a house. You're fit to start and drive a car. You're fit to start a business. Part of the new disruptive fangle economy is it's easier than it's ever been at any point in history to start a business. You don't even have to go to a bank to get a loan to get money to start your business. There's crowdsourcing. There's Kickstarter. There's Indiegogo. There's all kinds of ways for you to get the money. So, you have to start a business. The sooner the better. Even if you have a job and it's going great and it's going wonderful, if you start a business and like this actually happened to a guy in one of my groups. He knew he was getting laid off, but he had started like three years ago. So he gets, he gets his package and he doesn't have a hard landing. He has a very solid landing and there's none of this. What am I going to do? So even if you have a job, even if things are going lovely, you need to start some kind of business because when things turn, you'll be OK because it takes time to start a business. You, you make mistakes and you'll have to learn things. So you need to do this now. The third thing that you need to do, read newspapers, blogs outside of the United States. Know what else is going on in the world. Know that, you know, in the Philippines, rolling blackouts are the norm. Even before this tragic natural event, natural disaster that just occurred. Now, that was the norm. Know what's going on around the world because we're all connected like we've never been connected before. There are so many people who only know what's going on in their street or their city and fuck the rest of the world. That's dangerous. You put yourself at an information disadvantage due to apathy and laziness. Know what's going on because you can spot a trend and connect the dots and make yourself a business of money or gain a competitive advantage because it's all about information. It is all about information. The fourth thing that you have to do, stop thinking like you. If you're unhappy with your life, the current level of thinking that you employ is the reason. If you're unhappy to today, the decisions that you made today, before today, that is why you're unhappy today. And I'm not talking about someone who has cancer. I'm not talking about someone who just had this cataclysmic event that popped up. In the, I'm not talking to those people. I'm talking to 97 percent of the people who every morning their alarm clock goes off. They wake up. They go to work. They go wherever. And it goes like that day in and day out. If you are living that life and you're unhappy, it's your own damn fault because of the way that you think. 
It's one thing to not know. It's another thing not to want to get become better when the resources are ridiculously easy to get your hands on. At no point in history, I remember having to go to the library and the woman with the little horn rim glasses and the Dewey Decimal System and this car catalog to get those big books they would not let you check out. You don't have those limitations. You can gain so much information from your cell phone or your computer or your iPad. It is stunningly awesome. So the fifth thing that you need to do, you have to stop giving in to your lowest basic desires of comfort. Every now and then I'll get on the bus and you know what? I hate riding the bus. And this isn't an insult or slight to someone who's riding the bus. It's because I have a very comfortable life. It's real comfortable and it's very easy as you're seduced by comfort to feel and forget what it's like to go through hell. I have, there's this one bill that I have to pay and for some reason, it's just like you can't pay it online. So sometimes I'll go over there by vehicle, it's 10 minutes. By bus, it's three and a half hours round trip, maybe four if I miss one. And I do that to myself to remind myself what life could be like if I like forget. It's very easy. It's very easy. That's just a bitch. I see people, no one looks happy on the bus. Nobody. They're just sitting there like, I can't wait to get this shit over with. So get away from the comfort. Stop looking for easy solutions. And understand that if you learn to pay attention, to absorb information, you will not be a victim of being chronically laid off. If you start a bit, you, you will not be a victim. And I'm not going to bullshit you and say, oh, it's going to be easy. No, it's going to be probably one of the hardest things you've ever done in your life. Probably will be. But I present this to you. Working hard now, building a future for yourself and your family, or being one of those people in the streets pushing a buggy. Yeah, I said that. It's very doable because the thing is, if you don't have skill sets and information and the ability to use the information, it's very easy if you're a part of typical American success plan. You have a job. You have a mortgage. You have student loans. You have all this stuff. You lose your job. You go through your savings. Next thing you know, oh, your credit report's jacked up. Oh, you're getting interviews, but the minute they check your credit report, you can't get hired. Oh, okay. Y'all, your cars got cut off. Oh, you didn't pay your mortgage. They finally foreclosed on you. Oh, you're living with your mom. You see this downward descent? Because the typical response to a layoff is to look for another job. In an economy that's producing less jobs. If you use sound logic and reasoning, it's like, I can't find a job, so I will create one. And you're going, how does that work? Well, foreigners learn this lesson the minute they hit the shores. It's like, you know, I don't speak English. I can't get a job. I can create one. Asians have the highest income in America. Asians also are the, have the per capita per ratio or have the highest level of entrepreneurship and business ownership in the country. Do you think the two are not related? Think about that. They know that they come here, can't speak English, but I can start a business. I can serve Odyssey. <laughs> I can do it. And then they have this wonderful life. So understand this notion that you can't do it. You let it go. For, and there are people right now who are listening to this video, who have seen this, and they're like, they're there, or they're about to be there. In this time of year, every year, corporations start laying off people to make that fourth quarter look great. Cut the balance sheet. What's the quickest way to make a shorter balance sheet? Lay off a bunch of people. It's happening right now as we speak. eBay's doing it. I did a video a few months ago. eBay was culling and more and more people are getting, you can just cut out and mix. They don't need you. They don't need you. 
Understand that you have to own your life, your business, your ambition, and your dreams like you never had to before. Now, the good news is that you do it right. You can have a spectacular life. Not just an average life or an okay life. You can have a spectacular life. You can live a life of design. A life that you pick and choose what the hell you're going to do every day versus something having someone pick and choose it for you. That is the promise. So if you're having problems finding a job, change your thinking. Educate yourself. Become a voracious reader. Become a seriously copious consumer of information. Cram as much stuff in your head as possible. Turn the television off. Stop hanging around with negative people. Really start to work on your life. And that life that you may not be happy with be can become beautiful before you know it. So that's my advice to you. That's my methodology. That's what I did when I was in the same shoes as that woman. Except I ended up homeless. And I didn't have to file bankruptcy. Because I have shit. <laughs> I was judgment proof anyway. So understand that is how I got out of the hole and understand that the way that things were and the way that things used to work, that's all changed. And if you cling into that and hope into that because your grandfather's about to get his pension, you can't do what granddad did. You can't do what your father did. And on the other side, there's some goodness to that. There's some beauty to that. There is some wonderful wisdom. I mean, seriously, you get to pick. You get to choose. You get to make it. If you take responsibility and personal responsibility for your life, you can have all this. Something to think about. So I'm going to put the article there. And what I want you to do is to read the article. And then in the comments, just chime in with what you think. Because what she's experiencing and what many other Many, many thousands, maybe millions of Americans are experienced. It's going to heat up. Now, I want you to understand, if you're a long-time viewer of this channel, when I predicted the eBay thing, I told you it was going to happen again. I predicted that with stunning accuracy. On my other channel, when Zimmerman did his bullshit, I said he will get in trouble again. Six weeks later, he did it again. So, I'm, and how do I do this? Do I have a crystal ball that I rub? No. I look at the information the way that it is, not the way that I want it to be. You can do it too. And when you look at the information the way that it is, you can make better decisions. You can be prescient, as someone said when I predicted the Zimmerman thing. And that really wasn't that big of a deal because he is a person of low impulse control. The thing with eBay, once again, this was part of a plan eBay did testing to see what was going to happen to their platform if they got rid of 15,000. It's like, okay, let's crank it up to 30. Let's crank it up to 50. Let's crank it up to 100,000. And let me tell you something. For those of you who are selling on Amazon as Merchant Fulfill, at some point, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to, they're going to do the same thing at some point. Just letting you know now. Because technology is dictating those type of decisions. They're not personal. It's just like we can increase efficiency without adding sellers. We can increase efficiency without hiring more people. That's what the company's still going to do. So if you can make six billion dollars with 20 people, why are you going to hire 100? Doesn't make sense. And that's what's going on. So you have a choice. You could be one of the people doing the hiring. Or you could be one of the people that's getting fired. That's where it is. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Go ahead, read the article, put your comments down there. Let me know what you think. All right, this is Glenn and Cameron. And I'll see you on the good side.